there, and welcome to All Rats. Who here has told their friends they have pet rats, or think pet rats are cute, and gotten in response either a disgusted look on the other person's face, or even a mean comment towards your loved pets? I know I have. But did you know there is actually quite a bit of difference between the rats that live in the wild and the rats you get from a breeder or the store? While people have kept rats as pets for thousands of years, domesticated rats as we know them today have a fascinating history that actually only dates back to the bubonic plague in the 1700s. Before this time, black rats, also known as roof rats, reigned in Europe. While brown rats existed in Europe, they were small in number and didn't have a large impact. Before we go further into our story of the domesticated rat, an explanation of the distinction between black rats and brown rats. Black rats, scientific name Rattus ratus, are smaller than brown rats and are arboreal, meaning they prefer to live higher up off the ground. Brown rats, scientific name Rattus norvegicus, are larger and prefer the lower turf, hence the nickname sewer or street rats. As you can imagine, these two kinds of rats do not coexist well. And when the brown rats came to Europe from Asia in a mass immigration, aided by the Industrial Revolution, taking away a lot of the habitat of the black rats, they replaced their smaller cousins in the European cities. Well, people weren't thrilled about the large rodents running down their streets, I'm sure. And so to combat the surging number of rats, the profession of rat catching began. Rat catching is a pretty self-explanatory subject. They would catch the rat and dispense of it in some way. Sadly, most of the rats caught would then be sold to sportsmen to be used in rat baiting. Now, if you're sensitive to the subject of animal death, you can go ahead and skip this part. I'll put a marker down below where the sad part of the story ends. Rat baiting involved putting a lot of rats into a pit with a terrier. Then people would make bets on how long it would take the dog to kill all the rats. At the time, it was an efficient and lucrative way, albeit a disgusting way, to clear the city of the hordes of rats. Two big names behind the sport, if you want to call it that, of rat catching were Jimmy Shaw and Jack Black, not the actor. Jimmy Shaw was a manager of a large sporting house in London, and Jack Black called himself the Royal Rat Catcher of Queen Victoria. During the time of catching rats in high quantities, some rats showed genetic mutations through odd coloring, whether albino or some other color variation, these were seen as unique and kept by rat catchers and sportsmen like Jack Black and Jimmy Shaw, who would breed them or sell them to ladies as pets. Though these men started the interest in the different color variations in rats in the mid-1800s, it wasn't until 1901 that a woman named Mary Douglas really spearheaded the fancy rat movement. Mary Douglas, who became known as the mother of the rat fancy, was a pretty awesome lady. Mice had become pretty popular in England at this time, with their own society, the National Mouse Club. This woman is like, hey, that's not fair that I can't show my rats, and asks to be allowed to participate in a fancy mouse show with her rats. Well, the National Mouse Club allowed it, and her black and white hooded rat won best in show. 11 years later, the name of the club was changed to the National Mouse and Rat Club. But sadly, after Mary Douglas's death in 1921, interest in fancy rats waned and the club changed back to just the National Mouse Club. This began a bit of a dry season for domesticated rats. And although a few people tried to get clubs up and running through the years, it wasn't until half a century later in 1976 that the first rat society was successfully formed by Jeff Izzard and Joan Pierce. With the birth of the National Fancy Rat Society, the rat fancy surged again and has held strong since with many breeders working hard to better the species. Just two years after the NFRS was formed, the first American club, the Mouse and Rat Breeders Association began. And five years later, in 1983, the American Fancy Rat and Mouse Association was formed. Though the domesticated rat is very young in its existence, we can already see the amazing changes selective breeding has made. Because of rat breeders breeding for temperament, health, and different colors and variations in their rats, we have varieties such as Dumbo rats, Rex rats, a wide selection of colors with friendly dispositions. How awesome is that? So after 200 years of domestication, how are our pets, Rattus norvegicus domestica, 
different than the rats outside scavenging in the wild? Probably the most noticeable is the physical aspects. Wild rats, for the most part, have a gray or brown standard coat with ears on the top of their head. Fancy rats, on the other hand, can be dumbo-eared, top-eared, standard coat, rex, double rex, among other variations, as well as a huge assortment of colors. Other than color, fancy rats are also much friendlier than their wild counterparts and have a longer lifespan. In the wild, rats usually only live to be a year, but this is largely due to the struggles of living in the wild. A huge thank you to all those breeders who have contributed to and are continuing to contribute to the betterment of fancy rats. Without their hard work, we wouldn't have these amazing animals as pets. If you haven't already and are in search for an amazing breeder, go check out my rat breeder directory linked below for some of the best rat breeders in America. I hope you learned a lot today about the journey of the domesticated rat. Let me know what you thought in the comments. To make sure you don't miss any great rat content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at All Rats Mischief, which I'll link in the description below for you. Thank you for visiting All Rats, and we hope you have a ratastic day.